Decades before spaceflight, before we could physically probe the Earth's atmosphere, when the idea of humans walking on the moon was nothing but science fiction, we had radio. That meant by the early 1940s, reaching the moon's surface with a transmission sent from Earth was more than plausible. It was theoretically proven. The problem? No one had done it yet. That all changed here in 1946. This is the former site of Camp Evans, the United States Army Signal Corps training facility and laboratory in Monmouth County, New Jersey. Thanks to the abundance of radar research conducted during World War II, a team of wartime scientists who hadn't been discharged yet, and the wonderful tenacity of a nerd with a pet project coupled with equipment that was already on site, theory became proof of concept. By sending a radio signal through Earth's ionosphere, bouncing it off the moon, and receiving a signal back, for the first time in history, humans made contact with the moon. I'm Lori Lauber. I'm the director of the InfoH Space Exploration Center. So here in 1946, a team of five men with a lot of support were able to send a radio signal, bounce it off the moon to prove what they thought was true, that we could receive a radio signal from above the ionosphere. And the reason that that was so important is because if we were to create any kind of a machine that we would be able to communicate with, we would have to know that we could do that. We could communicate with the machine. And so on January 10th, at 11.58 in the morning in 1946, this team of five guys who had been trying for many years to do this without success were finally able to see and hear the signal being bounced off the moon. The experiment, named Project Diana after the Roman goddess of the moon, was arguably the birth of radar astronomy, the practice of studying the universe with high-frequency radio waves. Its applications in both space and human communications were vast. The press ran with it. This was nothing short of science fiction becoming science. In a way, it still is. So today, I'm here to recreate it. But with a slight twist, the original experiment sent short pulses of sound to the moon, and that's fine, but a bit dull. So I'm sending a recording of my cat. OK, um, there are a few other key differences. This isn't Camp Evans anymore. It's the InfoAge Space Exploration Center. And the bed spring antenna used in Project Diana quickly became obsolete and was torn down to make room for advancing technology, specifically this radio telescope, the TLM-18, installed for NASA's TIROS program. The experiment designed to determine if satellites were useful for things like tracking the weather. And yeah, they were. We could take a photograph using infrared data of a hurricane forming on the Earth that might threaten millions of people's lives. And if we could take that picture and be able to kind of know where it was going, then we could save millions of people's lives. And when we look back at the original moon bounce and think that that is how we got to the point where we could save millions of people's lives, it was all worth it. The moon is Earth's natural satellite, so if you want to bounce your cat's meow off the moon, all you need is a radio telescope capable of transmitting and receiving signals, a day when the moon is in the correct position, and some people who are qualified and nice enough to let you do it. We operate between the frequencies of 1,000 to 2,000 megahertz, and at 1296, 0 0.20 megahertz, we send a signal to the moon. Our dish also receives the signal back, and in 2.5 seconds, our radio signal, having traveled 250,000 miles to the moon and 250,000 miles back from the moon in 2.5 seconds, returns an echo. So what we do here is the echo of what we send. Now, we send this signal in two ways. As a continuous wave, you can imagine a wave that would sound like me. And then with UHF, we send a carrier of voice on top of that continuous wave. So now we can say, hello, moon, and hear our voice bounce off the moon. So it looks like I'm in love. So today, we're going to send the first cat meow to the moon and back. Let's see if we can get this done. This is KD2, OMA, Kilo Delta 2, Oscar Mike Alpha. At the InfoAge Space Exploration Center, sending the first cat meow to the moon.
and Shay has traveled 500,000 miles from the Earth to the moon and back. First cat meow anywhere on the planet. This was it. Project Diana was a sensation, but more significantly, it was a stepping stone both in space exploration and towards modern human communication. Earth-Moon-Earth -Earth communication opened up the possibility of communication with spacecraft and extended our reach to the planets. Traveling at the speed of light, so the speed of radio, round trip time to the moon is only two and a half seconds. Round trip to Mars is up to half an hour. Reaching Voyager 2, the better part of a day. As we reach the limits of radio-based communication, there are other areas to be explored, including things like lasers. There's still science fiction to become science. But radio will always be fundamental to the human narrative. Anything wireless, anything you use to talk to your friends and family, and more than likely the device you're watching this on right now, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, your cell phone, they all use radio. The history of communication is, in part, a timeline of advancing technology, but it's also the story of our desire to connect, our ever-growing need for flashier interfaces and more efficient ways to encode and transmit data. How we got from telegraphs to smartphones is an expression of that desire. The common thread in our daily global interconnectivity for centuries has been radio, and it's not going away anytime soon. A huge thank you to Lori Lauber, Mike Rain, and everyone at InfoAge Space Exploration Center. You can find out more about them by pulling down the description. Special thanks to Frank O'Brien, a NASA Solar System Ambassador at the Jet Propulsion Laboratory who gives monthly lectures at InfoAge. Frank helped make sure this video is accurate every step of the way, and I've linked his lecture on Project Diana's place in the history of space communication here and in the description. And thank you to this channel's patrons and supporters. Yes, this channel has a Patreon that I'm announcing for the first time right now. I cannot stress enough how optional it is. As someone who wants to support all my favorite creators but has to put every dollar into running this channel if I want to make the type of content I hope to bring to the platform, I completely understand not being in the position to donate. As ever, the best way to support this channel and this content is by subscribing, watching, and engaging with the videos here on YouTube. As many of you have pointed out, on location is very expensive, so if you are in a position to donate, that helps immensely in allowing me to bring you the stories I really want to bring you. I also have a paypal.me link in this and future video descriptions for anyone who wants to donate but isn't in a position to pledge monthly. I'm working on building Patreon into an additional community with frequent bonus content, but that content will come to this channel monthly. Nothing will ever completely be behind a paywall. So thank you to everyone for watching and subscribing. Thank you for your feedback. Thank you to Austin McConnell for everything, and I will see you next week.